So the Minnesota Fighting Vikings cornerback room has been interesting. This offseason, they punted longtime veteran uh, Xavier Rhodes as well as Trey Waynes. They didn't retain a Mac Alexander, who I would like to have back, but he got him. So Mac and uh, Waynes went to Cincy. Uh, Rhodes went to the Colts. Having a decent year with, with Indianapolis, but yeah. And then they elevated uh, young veterans Holton Hill and Mike Hughes to be the de facto starters. And then they spent a first-round pick on Jeff L. Hefe Gladney out of TCU, Cameron Tiny Dancer out of Mississippi State, as well as Harrison Hand out of Temple slash Baylor, right? And then Dancer, Hughes, and Holton Hill were your week one starters. You're like, okay. We can work with this. Cameron Tiny Dancer ha- had the best training camp in recent memory of a Vikings cornerback. He's going to come in, woo, shut things down. Devontae Adams, who? Week one, and then the Vikings got spanked by Green Bay, but it's, it's whatever. Lo and behold, uh, it, it's a it's a it's it's symptomatic of 2020. Like, things never happen the way you expect. So, halfway through the season, a Vikings starting cornerbacks the last two weeks have been El Jefe, Working outside and in the slot. 2019 seventh round pick Chris Boyd out of Texas, as well as Lions waiver claim Chris Jones. Because because why not? Why the hell not? Uh, Hughes and Holton Hill on IR, plus they were bad uh, to begin with, as well as Cameron Tiny Dance were recovering from that scary hit uh, against Green Bay. And, and guess what? Guess what? Gladney and the other two guys that no one had heard of before, it's working. And it's phenomenal. And Chris Boyd and Chris Jones, the Chris's, uh, may be diamonds in the rough for the Vikings going forward. So uh, Gladney and Boyd have started in base uh, with Gladney kicking inside in nickel. Uh, and as you can see from the snap counts and alignment, the corners have been consistently taking a side. And I think that's important you know, when you have young, inexperienced guys coming in. Learn one side. Learn one side's leverage. Use the boundary. One side. All of that stuff. Also, Harrison Harrison uh, back at safety you know what they'll be getting uh, with each cornerback uh, specifically on each side. Also, Zimmer knows uh, uh, that if you have young guys, time to get back to the basics. So pick a side, learn this spot, uh, take every waking hour learning this spot as opposed to uh, trying to learn multiple positions. Uh, so he did it last year with the cornerback rotation that was famous, right? So you're rotating out a very highly paid former all-pro cornerback. Okay. Okay, uh, but if you look at the alignment in years previous, uh, Waynes, Rhodes, Newman uh, would switch sides, trail uh, wide receiver ones all over the place, and you can do that when you have cornerbacks who know the system, both sides, as well as are you, you trust them, and they're firmly established. But even at the start of the year, uh, I, I think that it was a disservice to Cameron Dantzler as well as Holton Hill. Like They were constantly switching sides. Cameron Dantzler played about half of his snaps the first couple weeks uh, on the left and the right side. I don't think it was good. I mean, because you have Cameron Nassler, a third-round rookie coming in. All of a sudden, uh, you're having to learn a- on the fly, adjust to the speed of the game, a- and you're having to figure out the leverage on both sides, left and right cornerback. Eh, eh. Having new guys in, hey, this is where you are. This is where you are. Keep it simple. And guess what? It's working. Uh, it- it's working. And Vikings uh, defense has risen from 16th uh, to 10th in terms of DVOA over the last two weeks. There were 26 after week one. Uh, Jones... Has been looking good. A 2018 UDFA coming out of Nebraska uh, has shown to have nice length and size, six foot 200. Also is in the 90th percentile in terms of our length, 88th for wingspan. Uh, and he will be physical with receivers. Like some really nice technique as well. Had that pass break up uh, on Marvin Jones against Detroit, even though they called a FUBAR penalty. And, and you do get some Brandon Browner uh, diet vibes from him where, you know, he's not, uh, you know, 6'4", 230 like Browner, but he's got length. He will get physical uh, w- with wide receivers as well as he's pretty adept uh, at playing off man as well. So it's really nice little find there uh, off of waivers from Detroit. Uh, Chris Boyd, of course, 2019 seventh round pick from Texas uh, had uh, only allowed one catch for nine yards against Chicago, as well as the 14th highest graded cornerback per PFF uh, for week 10. Uh, he, he's just a guy that made the roster last year, played on special teams and just sort of was floating in the back. It was like, OK, all these young rookie cornerbacks coming in. OK, I will still compete. I'll still get my shot. And he's played extremely well uh, ever since uh, there was a rash of injuries. Chris Boyd has come in. And whenever he's been on the field, he's been looking pretty damn good. And of course, we've talked about Jeff Gladney proving every single week, already mastering that slot position, which might be the most complicated uh, position in the Zimmer defense. Like there's a reason why. Even though Terrence Newman was a little bit long in the tooth, he trusted him in the slot more than anyone else. And it's the reason why a great professional like uh, Captain Munderland took a full year to really buy into the system. Same thing with Mac Alexander, took two full years, right? So, uh, and also, like, they better bring their games. 
Like the better bring their lunch pails on Sunday because it's a big one. Even though uh, the Cowboys offensive line is dinged up and Andy Dalton is not Dak, Amari Cooper is still legit. Michael Gallup, former teammate of BC Johnson at Colorado State, is damn fine on the outside as well. Plus, CD Lamb is going to be working that slot against El Jefe all day on Sunday. And the Packers, they're garbage besides Devonta Adams, who is not as good as Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen. Detroit didn't have Baby Tron, and Chicago, besides Allen Robinson, is kind of eh. Yeah, so this is the first real test uh, of this trio of cornerbacks. Plus, uh, eventually you do get Mark Fields back. Uh, Cameron Dancer is progressing uh, back from concussion protocol. Uh, And also, I I do like Dylan uh, Mabin, guy they claimed off the Raiders practice squad. Plus, I I really love Cordrea Tankersley, who they signed uh, formerly off of Miami's practice squad as well. So the cupboard is not bare, and and you can tell – and, you know, sometimes uh, fans, we deride Mike Zimmer for being a quarterback whisperer. It's like, oh, yeah. but he's doing a damn good job. Also give a lot of credit to Durante Jones, a defensive backs coach, because there, there was a high degree of difficulty coming in. You're behind the eight ball, no OTAs and, and no uh, preseason games. And then you cratered right away. And then now you have guys that were on the bottom of the roster, guys who were on the team uh, a month ago, and now they're playing some damn fine cornerback out there for you. Uh, and we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens Sunday because if the Vikings are going to beat the Cowboys, avoid that trap game, uh, it's going to have to be uh, shutting down or at least putting a dent in, in that Cowboys passing game. And these three cornerbacks, El Jefe, as well as the two Chris's, are uh, going to go a long way to ensuring that happens on Sunday afternoon. Uh, but your thoughts? Uh, Chris and Chris, Diamonds in the rough. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work? Post some of the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.